meeting good morning to everyone and good morning dear participants uh, i am already we are a little bit late so why i am uh, just uh, starting my meeting and we are we all know uh, what is the topic of the meeting the actually we are uh, in this era of the internet security and we are uh, so why we have uh, started our webinar on the cyber security and ethical hacking cloud databases and data analytics we have our speaker with us our very uh, renowned and very much uh, expertise speakers are with us and from our side we are uh, welcoming our speakers and uh, from the schedule i hope so you all are uh, familiar with the schedule now uh, from the main you all are familiar with the schedule that already have published to all of you uh, in our first day we will meet with our uh, speakers <clears throat> shomadipta basu Microsoft Technical Support Specialist, Secretary of Cyber Security, CEO of Start Experience Technica and Technology Bucket. Win and also he is the owner of Hackathon Samatava 2021. And the second speaker who will be with us, Shreyasi Sarkar. Shreyasi is an intern of Cyber Security Cell GNIT. He, she is the first rank holder of ethical hacking training program at GNIT. And she worked as Microsoft Technical Support Specialist, Alpha Microsoft Ambassador, and she's the winner of Samatava 2020 Hackathon. We are very lucky to have these two speakers with us. Now, I am welcoming our first speaker, Samatava, uh, Samadipta Basu. Sir, are you with us? Yep, good morning. Good morning, sir. We are very sorry from our side because we got a little bit late due to some technical glitches. Uh, please be here with us. Oh, no problem, it's all fine. Okay, okay, sir. So, are we good to begin with the session? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. Please be at the helm of the webinar. Please be with us. Good morning, everyone. Shreyashri here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would request the interested ones to turn on the camera so that we can have an interactive session. Yes, ma'am. I have turned on the camera from my side. <laughs> uh, if I may, if I may just interrupt for one moment, uh, Shreyashri, ma'am. Actually, we can't do that because of uh, the bandwidth restrictions of our network. So uh, when they will ask you, when they'll ask you, the, when uh, when you are speaking, you will be turning on your cameras, and when they'll be asking you questions, you will ask the individuals who are asking you the questions to turn on their camera. And otherwise, uh, you know, I would request everybody that if you want to have a, if you want to ask anything uh, to our uh, esteemed speakers, please raise your hand over Gmeet so that they can respond to it. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. That yeah, I'm introducing Mr. Chatadru Sen Gupta. Actually, he is the convener of this webinar. Me is the coordinator of the webinar. From my side, I'm Vipasha Viswas, and he is Chatadru Sen Gupta. Good morning, everybody. He is and the uh, we also have computer. our other convener. Also, and we have also got our other con. Okay, okay, sir, sir. He is the assistant professor of computer applications department, and I am also a colleague of the SAD, and he is also a SAD too. And very glad to meet with you, sir. Please continue. Yeah, uh, I was also going to say that uh, there is uh, we have got another convener with us, which I guess Shomodipto and Shreshi ma'am already know. Uh, that's Minaki Shorkar, our esteemed colleague. Uh, very well and known. She's also Minaki. here with us today. Please, Minakshi, switch on your camera one time only. Yes. Good so morning to all of you. In fact, I know about uh, every one of you, like the con starting from the convener, the chair, the coordinator, ma'am has introduced already before. So we are going to start our webinar 
from this session. Yes, um, please carry on, please carry on. Okay, so now uh, uh, switching off our camera, you please carry on. Surely, thank you. Okay, okay. okay. So good morning once again. So today's workshop or webinar is going to be on some basic awareness on cybersecurity. Now, welcome to the digital world. We are not unaware of this world, word digital world, because everything we are doing today is on the digital world. So in this webinar, let us learn how to keep ourselves protected while operating on the cyberspace. Now, cyberspace is a notional environment in which communication over computer network occurs. Like we are sending messages over WhatsApp, we are having a phone call, even we are having this webinar, everything is there in the cyberspace. Anything and everything that is beyond this digital screen is the digital world or the cyberspace. Now, you know, in today's, um, I mean, in this generation, now think of a moment, whatever we operate, let it be, you know, starting from sending a message or an email, uh, a normal WhatsApp call or a video, everything which is, you know, goes through the where we call it uh, cyber, right? We call it a networking. So whenever we are connecting and whenever there is not a reality involved and whenever it is only and only something which is not in a analog mode is something that is digital. So this is what actually a cyberspace is. Now, the term itself is very small, but let us see what depth can we take, I mean, can we figure out by this cyberspace and cybersecurity. Now, team, uh, any one of you, can you just like uh, come along and help us to know what is cybersecurity? I mean, so that we can, uh, we get to know that, what do you know about it? And then we will share our opinion and go forward with the session. Anyone? I mean, what do you feel? I mean, what do you think what cybersecurity is? I mean, it's Some a common term. Security of information. Someone wrote this. Okay, you can come on mic. No problem. We can talk. Okay, security of information. Never mind. Looking me on the right side. <laughs> there I'm reading the chats. It is a way of securing data breach from cyberspace. Okay. Any more? Okay. So cybersecurity means securing something in the cyber network, in the cyberspace. So whatever we do, remember from now onwards, we need to protect it. So let it be a small thing like uh, keeping our data, keeping uh, uh, protecting our privacy, keeping our photos in our phone to our phone itself. So securing our digital channels are cybersecurity. I mean, it is the responsibility of a cybersecurity. Now tell me one thing that who are responsible for you know maintaining the cybersecurity or keeping this strong? You can come in microphone mode, no problem. We can talk. I mean, who are responsible for keeping the cybersecurity strong or designing the cybersecurity? No one? Ethical hackers. Okay. Now, this is a good question. Uh, this is a, a nice answer from Shomo, uh, Shomo Jyoti Das. So can we speak to you? Can you turn on your microphone? Hello, sir. Yeah. Now tell me, uh, ethical hackers, right? So are you an ethical hacker? No, sir. I'm an MCA student. Yeah. Uh, I believe you're a student, but are you also a hacker? No, I'm le learning the course on ethical hacking. You're learning the course on ethical hacking. So now, nice. can we think like this, that since it is cyber security, now if you're walking on the road, 
Yes, sir. Whether or not you're going to be hit by a car, it is whose responsibility, your or someone else on the street? So my responsibility, I have to be out while so, walking. So, so you have your own system, you have your own computer, you have your own network. So yeah. you have your Facebook profile, Twitter, awkward, everything which we use. So yes, sir. whose responsibility is it to protect your privacy and to protect your data on your social media? First of all, I myself have, has to be aware of that. And if some mistakes happen by me, then there will be a breach. So to keep up the cyber security for ourselves, we need to be responsible and we should take the responsibility of keeping our network strong. So therefore that makes us all an ethical hacker for us, right? Yes. For ourselves. Yes, sir. So cyber security must be maintained by each and every one of us. And that is the only way we can keep the cyber space safe, right? Okay. Sir. Now, why do we need this cyber security? Imagine now um, we all know about privacy. We all, I mean, why do we keep passwords to protect our data? So cyber security means protecting our, I mean, we need cyber security to protect our data, not just, you know, um, for hiding sometimes because uh, it's more due to our safety. Let us think this in a short term. I mean, not, not going to a very long thing that uh, encryption, decryption, we're not diving into that. It's simply protecting our own thing. Suppose um, if you have noticed when teachers teach in our classrooms, what do we do? Uh, what do teachers do generally? They uh, share the full screen, right? Am I correct? So when they turn on their screens, we can see that whatever, uh, I mean, where which icon is placed in their system. For example, let me stop the full screen share. And yeah. So can you see the placement of my icons here in the dock, everyone? Yes, sir. Now you think, so once I am sharing my uh, screen in a full mode, you are getting to know that what is there in my system and where it is there, right? So it is making my positions on my system vulnerable. So you can write a simple small piece of code to access each and every of the application by sending it to me by email. Uh, suppose I'm going back to the desktop, you can see all the position of my files in here, right? Now think if my position, now as I'm sharing my screen, my position is revealed and you can see where, uh, which one is it? And suppose you want this file, uh, it's a song. So you know the name of the file, you know the position of the file, then that's on my desktop. So anything, if I'm sharing my full screen, it means what? I am sharing the privacy. I'm sharing my privacy and not by sharing the uh, screen, which is need to be shown to the others. Similarly, in terms of mobile, uh, in terms of uh, when we go to ATM, uh, if you do not hide up in, so taking into the shorter view, it, cyber, why do we need cyber security? To protect the privacy from each and every way. So we will be, uh, as we go along, we will be talking about different methods, different steps, or the types of cyber crimes we face around. Now, before we move on to that, we need to know about internet and intranet this is this is a very known topic for everyone a very known topic internet means what it means a huge network of connections with no restrictions and you know people from all over the world can connect with each other whereas internet means what connecting within some people in a limited space for example five people playing uh, playing counter strike a game in a room connected to each other People are talking like uh, previously, just before five years, we, we used to send Bluetooth messages. If you're in the range from one room to the other, that is intranet. So anything which is not global and has restrictions are the intranet and anything which has no restriction and is global and access, uh, acceptable by all is internet. Can anyone give uh, a good example of intranet to me? My, I mean, by leaving the ones which I give. And where is this intranet used? Anyone? Just an example of intranet. Uh, use of Wi-Fi in a house. Use of Wi-Fi in a house. 
okay if the wi-fi is not connected uh with the internet again it's an intranet this is a good example yeah it can be accepted so again if the wi-fi is isolated it means not connected to the internet to the broadband or the cable which is connecting it to the global network and we are just connected to the wi-fi only within the local primary space again just to play games or again just to go to a network among us you yes college or school lab college or school lab if it's not connected to the internet again yeah i want a hard example you know you know about the nuclear factories right the cable is mm -hmm. internet example of cable i couldn't uh, couldn't catch that i couldn't catch that pardon is internet example of cable cable Mm, I still couldn't catch that, but anyways, um, think about uh, nuclear nuclear plants. If you if you have known anything, maybe uh, let it be. Uh, anyone have heard the story of Chernobyl? I guess everyone. So these plants or these big networks, they do not have any communication with the outside world. Their systems they all run together in the intranet. I mean, whatever they have the system, it is only and only limited to that personal space. You need to make a call, you need to go outside, you need to make a call, you need to connect to some other department that needs to be hardware from outside. And why this is so? See, if a system you have is isolated, it is not hackable. If you cannot reach the system somehow, either physically or by the means of where or by means of any network, it is not hackable. So when we are dealing with the cyberspace and talking about cybersecurity, the best mode of network we can ever adopt is the intranet. If the person, a hacker is not within us, then it is the safest mode. As nobody can, you know, intrude in your system if it's not connected globally. No connections, no hacking. No fraud. In general term, what uh, like in Hindi or Bengali, what we say, jali, it can be a fraud. It can be termed as fraud in English. So it's like anything which is not completely revealed or like if someone is pretending to be someone else, it is a fraud. If someone is not sharing a complete information, withholding some of the information within himself, it is a fraud. Like anything is a fraud if it is not uh, completely revealed or it is intending to some unfair means or some unfair ga gains. So think in this moment, um, I'm standing on the train. You're standing just right beside me and you are typing your messages and we have that bad habit sneaking around, eavesdropping. So we are looking into messages. We are learning something about you. And that is also fraud. We are sitting in the examination hall. We are cheating from other. It's a fraud. Giving online examinations, cheating from the internet. That's not cheating. It's open book. We call it so. That is also a type of fraud. So fraud can be anything which you know you're not knowing or you you cannot depict the actual identity of the person. Now, please pay very strong attention to the terms which we will be going from now onwards because each and everything is interconnected. And once we go to the next page from each and everyone, you'll be finding more sense coming into this hacking this is the main i mean this is one of the strongest thing that uh, science have ever discovered now if you think now let us not go into deep uh, thoughts about hackers black hoodie sitting in the uh, sitting in a room with you know full of servers etc and so on if you ask me the other word for hacking is coding so hack means code you want to enter to a server, you need to write a piece of code. You want to decrypt something, you need to write a piece of code. So what is hacking? Hacking is nothing, completely nothing. Just writing a small, simple piece of code, which will focus on our motive. Now, generally, when we talk about this term, we talk about like uh, penetrating into some computer, taking some important data, you know, trying to access or stop in for uh, important information flow and therefore, uh, you know, making things jammed or many other things which we can do so in a simple word do not stress your brain hacking means the simple coding the better you code the better you hack L let it be in terms of anything like uh, generally we receive some questions from hacking that what language do we need to use on hacking uh, what mode which operating system is familiar so in that way 
I'll tell you that no, cut out that. We do not have any specific mode. We do not have any specific programming language. It uh, always depends on the target system you are trying to go into, get into. Like suppose if you want to get into uh, a, a Facebook server, you need to be an advanced Python. Uh, not just Python. There are many things. So based on the server, you choose your standards of hacking, of coding. Now talking about hacking comes the hackers and there are basically you know there are many types of hackers but we will be talking about the black gray and the white now talking about the black one black ones are the ones who have no motive who, who just have their knowledge a, a very strong build of knowledge and they use it for wrong purpose now it can be anything white hackers on the other hand they are the ethical hackers whom we will be talking about and whom we all should become to protect this cyberspace and the gray are the ones who are a combination for today suppose we are working for HID and tomorrow we go to another college. So the person who had been the security in charge or the security admin of HID might know the way the login, the encryption types, which HID had been using since long. So that can be used or shared in some other company by the same person that makes him a gray hat. It means neither he is using uh, things for being, I mean, changing sides. So that's in the middle of white and black. Now, computer viruses. Now, let me know how many of you right now um, are from a Windows system. I mean, Windows or a Macintosh, but not from a mobile. How many of you are logged on from uh, your computers right now? You can raise your hand or you can. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. Or can, can, can you list down some of your emails so that I can show you something? I mean, what can happen in case things can go wrong uh, with a computer virus after explaining it in the chat. You can, you can leave your email on the chat. OK. Please leave your email on the chat. Now, computer virus. Again, we need to simplify. When it, whenever we are thinking in the cyberspace, we need to simplify things. Not everything is a virus for everyone. Now, we all use torrent, right? We use torrent to download films, pirated films. We uh, use torrent to download softwares. And not just torrent, we use different websites to get gain different things. Now, there are programs which are useful to us. There are programs which are, I mean, which does not turn to be that much useful. So computer virus is a program which is not useful to us or which does not match with the intentions which we downloaded them for either by mistake or you know by or, or or anyway so computer virus is nothing it's a program again it is a program designed by a coder that is a hacker and is released into your system uh, please send someone uh, some email ids i will be sending a pdf to check and view on anyone it, it will not be a problem okay I have two email addresses. So we will be pausing here for two minutes and I will be sending a PDF to these email addresses and I'll we will tell, uh, tell them to share the screen and check what's going on. So just a moment. Yeah. We have three email address. Uh, let us let us also share the screen for all three of them. Uh, I'll request Pintu, uh, Shomajyoti, Rishabh, and CS Nasir to uh, share your screens. Now, everyone, uh, ha have a uh, look what happens. Now, it's just for fun, and we we'll gain something from it, I believe. Can can we share your screen? Uh, can you share your screen, everyone, all together?
okay please check your email if you have uh, received anything till now Okay, uh, did, did you receive the email? It should be sent to you. I mean, it has been sent to you. Nope. Mm, it should be there. It should be. Uh, it can. It can represent a V transfer as well, or it can represent my name, Shomadip Tabasho zero six. Anything. Just check for it once more. You can. You can keep your screen shared. No problem. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Please share your screen. Risha, please share your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let us go to your email and let us open the attachment or the link. Yeah. We can click on the link, it will just download the file, take it to the uh, downloads. Now, please download the file. You can click on close, not a problem. Okay, now can we just go to the PDF file? Yeah, open. So can we just run that file? Open. Now, what will happen is, uh, Rishabh was sharing the screen, right? So what we'll see after some time, Rishabh will be like left from the meeting. He has no access to his computer. It might even shut down. So am I making sense right now that what, uh, I mean, how necessary it is to, you know, decide what to do and what not to. People are losing money via phone calls. People are, uh, you know, uh, everything is getting uh, like people, they call you. They say that uh, install a uh, application called Team Viewer. They say that uh, install it by a different name. So if they search it anyway, they get the Team Viewer, they install it. They say that you need to click on share. You need to give me the number. We are verifying your card, anything, etc. And their screen starts sharing. So let it be a small file which has been sent to you as a PDF. Now, the, the, the way I have sent the PDF is it looks a little lame right now. I mean, when generally a proper hacker or someone will be sharing the screen, see, we can see that Rishabh Kumar left. So he did not leave the meeting. He is made to leave the meeting by the file which he ran. So no worries, it will not harm the computer. It, he will be back online after some time. So anything which we execute, is our own responsibility. So whether if you are sending a file and you're running it or you are downloading it from the internet or somehow if you're doing it, it means that you're doing it for your own. And before you do it, you must make sure that you know what are you executing. Okay, I have a text here. Uh, it may be done through any link through SMS or any type of contact to the victim. Yeah, it can be done anyway. Like, uh, I, I might not require your permission to, uh, to do anything to your PC. I, I know you're in the meeting. Maybe I will be needing a few uh, details on you, like garbage collection. Now, let us uh, stop uh, referring to the PPT for the moment. Since we are into an interesting topic, let us dive in here. I think I, for doing something, I need to know you. I need to know you as a person. Now, what will I do? I'll try to be your friend. 
I will I will try to talk to you. I, I'll try to learn whatever you know. I'll try to learn your habits when you're in front of your machine, when you go where, what is your, you know, curriculum, when you get up in the morning, when you sit for examination, when is the time you go to bed? So this way I will be having an entire set of things about your mind. I'll start following you. I'll go to your I'll go to I'll go to have food with you. Why? Right? I'll I'll make you pay small bills. So we have the bill. We we, we will try to, you know, get your number. I guess Rishav is back. So we'll get your number from there, right? Yeah, we'll I want your, to know uh, why we'll... my system is uh, getting uh, switched off because you have sent some virus or like that in my server. Again, it's like I... a, again, if you are defining something, it is a, it's a program, and yeah, you yeah. choose to run the program. So whether I influence, I told you to run the program, or whether you ran the program, it's on you. So keeping yourself protected in the cyberspace is your responsibility, not mine, right? Am I making sense, Rishabh? Yes, yes, yes. For so you yes. don't interview, you not know my intentions, right? You do not yeah, know yeah, what I that know file that. has. Uh, exactly. So what piece of code lies behind that file, you do not know. I might have your system information by now. I might have. So yes. you do not know. So yes. a file which you are executing in your system with the permission, I mean, you know USC, right? User account control. So whenever you click on yes on that box, it means you're giving a full user control yeah. to that file to run your system. Yes. So any program which is had, if it is also having, I mean, you know about a memory, uh, I mean, you know about uh, memory integrity, right? In your system, memory isolation, anything about that? I mean, when you're operating in a Windows environment? Yes. So you also know about TPM, Trusted Platform Module? It can be TMP, Trusted Module Platform, I forgot. So what happens, there is a core isolation technology hidden in your computers, right? So if you're, if you're giving... Don't get it, Samir. Core don't. isolation technology. I mean, if you go to settings, if you go to your uh, Windows security, if you go for memory integration, you'll find a core isolation technology, which is used for separating the core files which are running in your system with the non-core files. I mean, so that if anything goes around in the outside, the core files of your system is not affected and you are safe. So right now, if you're giving a full USC access, user account control access by clicking on that yes button, you are running whatever script I ran in your system. Thank God I did not, uh, I mean, code for anything which will be giving your system information or the data. Now think that why did I <laughs> tell you that while doing a meeting, for the teachers not to share the entire screen, a student can be smart enough to check that which icon on the desktop uh i mean see i can tell a teacher ma'am can you go back to the last day's pdf and open and show me the file let me show you how uh let me share my screen again back again mm, yeah so uh please give a confirmation once you see my screen share Shri. Yeah, it's visible okay so i can tell a teacher in the class who is taking my class that you know uh, ma'am i missed i have a question from the last day's pdf can you open it once so what happens, I will go to my, the teacher will go to the file manager, the teacher will try to check the drives where the file is present. Suppose maybe I'm going to, the teacher will go to the documents, then we'll go to some files and then, so you are, suppose the teacher opens a file from here maybe, or from here maybe. So the student will, you know, eagerly see the path the teacher is trying and then they will be, you know, trying to monitor what are the things they are there in the path. And then you can send the, uh, and everything is online now, the assignments, everything. So uh, you give exams by uploading things either in the Google Drive or in some portal for the HID college, right? So you can just upload a virus, a small file programmed by you to just go and access that location and download that location to a certain, uh, uh, you know, place in the server and then mail it to you. It's that easy. Are you again getting my point? If not, you can uh, get uh, turn on your mic and ask me. This is a very important concept. Uh, if if you if you're getting what I'm talking about, we are sharing the screen, and you know the part what is kept where exactly. So you can write a very small piece of code accessing that path and that location, and then you are you know sending it. Therefore, it can be also useful for getting patient papers. It can be also. It can be done for each and everything, and it is that simple if you're not, uh, if you're careless. It is that simple. Because ethical hacking, uh, not about here, there is no ethical here. <laughs> hacking is not that 
tough if you are you know simplifying things and using it in the right way you not you always need not to be a very strong coder you need to be smart and sharp about how i mean how you're going to use it uh there's a question can i extra this file what inside in pdf you can do whatever you want with that file you it's all yours you can check it you can do anything but you'll find a simple piece of code it can be also it, it can also show you that it's a just a shutdown program and nothing else but you do not know what's encrypted inside again i mean a hacker will never give you a file which will be automatically opening all the codes which you have inside the file i mean if you try to just uh, check the properties or something you will you might see that it's just shutting down your system by a small piece of code but again we do not know what inside you, you you'll never get to know what what is inside it unless you know about it moving on to the next so it's always recommended not to share extra screens not to share extra information talk very less listen very more because next when you, we will be hitting on to the social engineering you'll understand why am i talking about yep next is the ransomware so this is a very common term everyone knows about it people you know locks your computer sends a virus like uh, already rishab did uh, he he installed the application he ran the application through the highest level of user account control by clicking on yes and it ran into the computer it had everything it had access to the core isolation technology it has access to the hard drives sometimes it can also access to the drive with the bit locker keys if you are wearing i mean if you are using windows 10 pro bit locker key bit, bit locker is the one i mean you will be using windows 10 pro for using bit locker only and not the home so sometimes it can also if if the hacker is smart enough the bit, bit locker uh, encryption drive can also be accessed by the key itself so ransomware they send you a file send you a piece of file a piece of small code and then makes it run it can be sent in very much i mean very different ways for example i'm sending you a picture you're viewing it it can contain i'm sending you a small song you're listening to it it can i'm telling you to install uh, i mean tell me one thing you, you do not type turn on your microphone and tell while installing some applications let it be um, opera browser let it be torrent do you get uh, do you see that automatically some other applications get installed without your permission turn on your mic and speak no problem suppose you're trying to install some other apps automatically you see two three icons on your desktop you're trying to download a gaming app you see two three icons yeah Automate. yeah it happens sometimes it happens some icons coming exactly to download but okay. uh, we are not uh, performing we are not able to download mm -hmm. our purpose is not to download that app because it's a virus so again it's not a virus it's a code it's a piece of code it's a software yeah. yeah but for so, that moment we think it's a complicated virus ways. or unusual app yeah so what happens it it it, it comes prebuilt i mean it comes attached with the file which you're trying to download and automatically when you're clicking on that yes again you're giving the usc control and therefore it is installed in your system right so this can be also in a form of ransomware which can lock your computer do you know what actually happens when a ransomware comes to your pc the aram extra extension for example suppose this is a screenshot so a screenshot will be having let me show you so yeah so if you can see my desktop screen it's very small however you can see that it's a kind png image right everyone so what happens when a ransomware comes in your system they will be adding an extension after the extension of the file so if the file name is screenshot.png it will be screenshot.png. something else it can be dot my name show more it can be dot class it can be dot anything which the people have kept which the coders have kept which the hackers have kept now those extensions cannot be executed i mean if you have tried that running a file which is not in i mean which do not have any application to run it in your system what it shows that cannot find a specific app for this file to run it right come on make it uh, i mean collaborative uh, you can turn on your mic and speak if you're trying to install an application in your computer and you see that uh, the application do not have a certain application who, which needs to run it if you do not if you do not have a image viewer will it run that program i believe no so similarly your voice is breaking okay shesh you got to give me a confirmation on my voice like i can hear it properly 
Okay, it might be an issue. Can you check your connection once? Okay. So, if you're adding a file screenshot.png dot my name is omyshomo, so that file will not be executed. It means you're locked. Unless you pay me the money, I'm not going to give you the money. I'll not. I'll not give you the code to unlock your system. So this is what ransomware does. And you know, trust me. these are very much i mean no hard code is needed to prepare such a program you can just simply done i have done it i have done a tons of times and it is very much easy you can even also try to google it out see in the program and do it however make sure that you do it on your own risk and properly because sometimes what happens if you follow a youtube video or if you follow some steps in the internet they are you know they are just a honey trap for you they trap yourself inside by following the steps so make sure you understand before you do something so we are sending a ransomware in your system it means your system will be locked unless we want it to be unlocked any hacker want you to be unlocked now comes the botnets so anyone do you have any idea what botnet is without reading this whatever it's there in the ppt anyone Hello. Yep. So botnets are the nets which automatically had attack without, like, without, like botnets. They they are the AI based bots. They automatically attack without okay. humans. Automatically attack without humans. Okay. So let me explain in this way. You're right. You're, you're partially right. Yes, Tanya. in single attacks in computer mm hmm pardon can you come again please so botnets are again these are nothing these are a program these are a software a software program a piece of code which is pre installed in your system like as we discussed just before as i said that be very much attentive because whatever we come across is interlinked with the other so while we try to download any other software different two three we see that sometimes two three different icons come on the desktop or other softwares are installed in your system so they can be a silent botnet a botnet is nothing just another software we who is inside your system sitting in there with your account usc permissions user account control permissions so when i want when a person from the outside want its to execute something from the inside if your system is connected to the internet they can just trigger from the outside and it will act from inside you're trying to rob a bank now think about a situation will it not be easy for you to have a man inside who will be helping you out with the timings uh, with the you know coordinates and all it will be definitely easy right if you have a person inside so the person the people who create the bot head botnets are the bot headers so they created they send it in your device they do not act immediately they let them to be silent now again rajiv you might think that uh, the thing which have installed right now which you, which you ran in your system can also be a botnet i mean tomorrow it can do certain actions which is it is programmed to do it it can be possible so again if you're installing anything into your system be very much attentive be think before you install that why you need it do i do i actually need it so question yourself that is how you can also be i mean it's not always important to be an ethical hacker by the codes you can also be by the mind so botnets it is so spamming is not a very uh uncommon word for us right like whenever in the official groups of our school or colleges we send some uh, you know random messages or some few links what teacher says stop spamming spamming is basically sending lots of messages to a large number of users like the messages may contain anything it can be some commercial advertisement but if they are not something useful or if it is not for any good purpose then it is obviously for some bad purpose especially this spamming occurs through it can occur through emails it can occur through your uh, sms or anything it is like sending continuous messages to you and it may contain any link it may contain any file which in return can cause 
you download some malware it can affect you as a virus or it may have some botnets it can have anything so this spamming is also a fraud or a fraud is sending you the spam messages so it can lead to anything that we are going to discuss in the next few slides now think of a moment you i, I believe each and every one of us including uh, the faculty or the students here face in the group that uh, in official group people starts promoting people will say that a great amazon offer click here to get uh, a lottery win a macbook pro we we get this type of spams right in our uh, in our whatsapps do we not right sir right so we do receive a lot of spam messages even two days before i can if i have it right now i can even show you at the moment it, it has been done by one of my friends who has sent me the link and uh, let me find it out i'll read it out exactly what was it in there it was written that hi you're is it you in the picture with a with a smiley face and they give a link the link even uh, you know when you're dealing with links you'll see that this, uh, you should always focus on spellings like if you're downloading a file from microsoft let the file name be anything like let it be um let it be windows 11 windows 10 or some garbage numbers but it should end always end with microsoft.com at the end no matter what file we go into it should always end or begin with microsoft.com these domains should be specific we click on messages with a wrong domain uh, in a spam message like amzon.in so amazon am ama is not there we do not uh, it is soothing to our eye we, we try we click it by trusting the program you have done it i believe right all of us even including me we click on spam messages right but one thing keep in mind i mean the more you click on this link the more you're making your you know uh device vulnerable now let me uh, i can give you a very quick example about this uh, my screen is still visible right can i get a confirmation yes oh, i'm just going to google right i'm typing my ip now you can see a public address am i right everyone you can see uh, try for yourself you can see your own address quickly i'll wait for you while you do it and give me a confirmation once done or uh, on speaker do not type You got your IP? Yes, sir. Now, tell me what did you get? No, you can share me. No problem. This is not uh, this is not social engineering on you. You can you can genuinely share it to me. You there? We have received an IP from Shine Deep. Okay, shine deep. So you, it's your IP, right? Now, um, let me come. Let me talk a little more about a little bit about networking. So whenever you take a broadband, right, we get uh, a set of IPs, right? One IP, one default gateway, one preferred DNS. One sorry, to inter sorry to interrupt, sorry to interrupt, Samya Deepak, but uh, I, there's some difference between public and private uh, IPs. Yep. I yeah. was about to come on that topic. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, but a little bit. Can you please elaborate? Because yeah. I have some uh, doubt in that. Okay, sure. Uh, because uh, while uh, we are using anyone's uh, hot spot, mm -hmm. uh, it's also some type of risk that it's we are. Not, it is not just some type of risk you are giving. Your yeah, it's type of risk. hacking. We can we use can it. Use uh, level at risk. Yeah. Yeah. So suppose if you're coming to my home, if you're using my Wi-Fi, uh, I'll not I'll not require more than five minutes to give you your entire WhatsApp conversation, your uh, calling, phone calls, your your messages, anything which is there in your system. So think before you use any what any Wi-Fi which is not yours. Even try not to use railway Wi-Fi's because yeah, it is having our authentication which will be using. Uh, let's not go more deep on that. Yeah, since it's government property. <laughs> Okay, so whenever we are searching for my IP, you get that uh, you get a public address. Now, 
just giving a short interview a uh, shot on this you have a centralized service provider in your area right you generally we generally call it our cable man who who gives the internet so that cable person gives the internet and for all the people in that same region will have the same public ip will have the same default gateway right suppose if if your internet is not working what do we do we we ping on the default gateway right to check our ping status to check the latency of our network yes or no i believe yes we all do that in our homes to check the internet to check the latency so what happens whenever you are logging an application this ip is stored inside that application if you're clicking the link that link will be having uh, having your public ip it will be having your device msc media access control number so not a number address so what happens through this exactly think very properly i have your public ip i have your msc address i mean that way i almost know about your device if i if, if your msc is gone it means your device is gone right so no matter what we click like for example if you're if you if you're visiting www.google.com google is having our information obviously google has access to the device what we are from which device are we viewing what is the battery percentage of the device because most of us we use android and android uh, the device manager in android is google so google will be having a complete piece of information ab ab about your system so it will know everything however google is private i mean google is strong enough to keep to to keep your privacy strong right but not all the sites we click on suppose if i'm giving you a random link right now and if you click on that i can tell you which device are you using what is the charge of the device what is the storage space of the device and many more what i, I will be capable of right so with time a person will be knowing everything of yours keep in mind whenever using an android sometimes it's not that difficult to you know record your um, passwords while you type it's that easy not that you need to be a strong coder you can just be a sharp mind sometimes people can just see and open the phone i generally do that i i i peek this is the password and i just type it see i i hacked your phone so hacking can be in different ways right not just always in coding you need to use your complete brain complete mind and complete resources which you have you can do a strong garbage collection i will come into that so what happens coming back to the topic when you have the ip when you have the msc address it's a person is getting one step closer to you so do not open websites that's why we use an antivirus right if we have a quickl installed if we have a kaspersky installed i do not prefer any other antivirus by this i'm not pitching so if you if you have the applications installed like quickl or kaspersky uh, what happens you try to open a page quickl will be blocking you and it will show that the site you are entering it might not be safe the site you are entering might be harmful so it blocks your access therefore it is interrupting the network before your system shares any further information with that now you might heard of the term that mac cloning msc cloning like if you're using good internet service provider connections you'll see that your router will be mac cloned i mean sorry your router will be mac matched i mean if you're trying to access it from a different mac address the internet will not work especially in a line especially maybe in gtpl nowadays uh, especially in geo so that mac needs to be matched right so what generally we do for the safety we clone the mac we do not keep the mac address of the device which you're using we clone the mac from another device and place it there for the safety because if if i'm suppose i'm cloning the router i'm cloning some other mac with the router's mac so what will happen if i'm uh, if i'm accessing your website you will be having my cloned mac address and not the actual mac address am i making sense are you getting me turn on your mic if you need i need to know if you're understanding then only i'll be able, able to proceed right yes sir okay yes sir samya yep samya dipak yep i i want to know something mm -hmm. go ahead uh, while we are using browser uh, there is incognito mode right mm -hmm. in that case uh, we are saying that uh, in incognito mode we are hiding the history and whatever mm -hmm. we are using right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the code which has been written mm -hmm. the behind that all are seeing that what we are using mm -hmm. and what we are not mm -hmm. while so um, the are also using that na so incognito mode is just a mode our ip address see incognito mode is just a mode in our system which hides your privacy from your parents that's it 
if you're using an incognito browser in your laptop it will not only it will not just save the browsing history it will no, no, I, I, I want i want to know that uh, while we are using incognito mm -hmm. and using some bank um, uh, document or anything definitely it will have our ips it will be having all the information which can be accessed by a normal mode of browser okay see but there is an uh, useful thing usefulness about using an incognito incognito browser deletes the cache and the cookies which is stored in your system right on you close the browser for example um suppose if you're opening the page of hit health institute of technology think that the first time you're opening from a new pc it will take a lot of time the second time you open it will take a little less time the third time you open it's having a complete cache or you're opening a, you open any different page you get a pop-up right accept caches and cookies you need to check or you can uncheck right you remember this right if you're uh, visiting any page let it be any page you get an option there that allow caches or cookies so if you're allowing that what happens it gets stored in your system so the next time if you're trying to uh, access something access the same page those things are pre-downloaded makes the page easier to open correct I believe yes. So what happens in the incognito browser? It deletes everything. Therefore, you are again fresh. So suppose if you are a web developer or if you are trying to do anything and a page is not opening, teachers, your professors, they, they, they suggest you try from an incognito first, right? Why? Because they will have nothing stored in your system. It will be like starting right from the scratch and you're coming to the, you, you're doing it again. So again, incognito is also safe in that way. Also, generally, we use it for uh, keeping our histories private from our parents. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so moving to the next part here, it is phishing. Now, phishing is like it, it is also like spamming, but here we are using an email. Means we are sending a link to you via email. Um, one thing. Uh, let me come back in this mode. So tell me one thing. Uh, let's close this. Yeah. Tell me one thing. Have you ever seen a Google form which is, you know, included in your email? Like you all know, right? If you're making a Google form, you can you can include the form itself in the email so that when you open the email, you can fill the form and you can submit it. Correct? Yes, right? Yes, sir. So you think if a hacker is sending you a Facebook page, exactly did to design you can design a page you know how right you can just inspect elements you download the uh, you know front end things you save it in a different place and then you just change the back back end links correct and therefore the page is ready it takes two minutes right or you feel like a program or you can uh, yes chatali are you uh, are you telling something no sir Okay, so if if you are uh, opening a page, uh, if you're a good programmer, you can design your own page, which is exactly will be like Facebook or Google or anything, and people might click there to give a password, uh, entry the user ID and password, and once they click on login, they have your passwords. Now, an intelligent mind, how a hacker will approach, how, how a good people, I mean, I mean, how a design mind will be approaching you, they will be telling that this uh, this is an email as this email has been sent to you from this 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 they will be giving official salutation of your college or anything click here to access the assignment you click here to access the assignment they will give you an exact google page log into google before you can access it so you try to log into google and then what happens you give your user id you you give your password right simultaneously now 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 to in today's date we cannot just log in with a user id or a password right we, we always need at least a two-step verification or an MFA. MFA means multi-factor authentication. We'll be coming to MFA later on. Let's talk about two-factor authentication. Now, if the user is online for the moment, what will happen? The page is designed in such a way that when you go and click, uh, you know, uh, they will be giving two backlinks. Like, for example, you're clicking on sign in, that ID and password will be given to the user as well as that you will be officially taken to the Google page as well for the sign in. So, right? You are getting one thing in two places. I mean, one program for two different things. You are getting the tr gaining the trust of the user because you are leading to the actual page. However, you are also storing the information. The difference is user needs to give the password twice. 
Now, if you're smart enough, you can also attach a screen recorder with it or a, or a keylogger with it. So you will be able to access the entire system. You will be, you will be able to see the entire thing. Things, the keyboard clicks, the mouse clicks, right? Am I making sense, team? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So this is what uh, which happens in phishing. Oh, again, I need to share my screen. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here are we. Phishing. So next is social engineering. This is the most important thing which I was, you know, which everyone is interested about. And even I, even if you want to become a very good hacker, let it be ethical or or <laughs> non-ethical. I mean, just a hacker without a good motive. You need to be a very strong social engineer. I mean, social engineering means gaining, you know, trying to be something of yours, gaining information, being a friend or being close to you anyhow. I mean, the main motive is to gain trust of the participant and, you know, uh, getting information. Think for a moment. We do receive calls from the bank, right? Yes or no? Someone talk to me. Yes, sir. Okay. So you do not turn off your mic. Keep on talking to me. What happens in the call? We get the call. They say that, hi, I'm calling from SBI. Hi, I'm calling from Central Bank. So your card is expiring, correct? No, sometimes what we think, we think to be, you know, smart. We think ourselves to be smart enough that we can keep on talking to them because we know that, you know, uh, they are calling for bluffing. They want our card details. We get over smart. We keep on talking to them. Remember, the more we talk, the more we share our information with them. Here, what happens if uh, if if a good pe if a good person call you, they will be telling you that hi. Uh, this is uh, this is the general manager from SBI. They will be knowing the name of the manager. They will be giving a manager name. For example, uh, Sanjeev Roy. So this is Sanjeev Roy from SBI. And um, uh, we have called you to give some information about your card, which you're using right now. They already have done the garbage collection. They will be giving you the last four digits. Suppose they have followed you to a food court. They have followed you to the ATM counter. You have taken a receipt and they have taken that receipt. After you leave, you, you just scratched and threw away in the dustbin and they have uh, collected that receipt. So they have your number. So they will tell you, this is the last four digit of your ATM card, I believe, yes. And I, I'll also say, I'll also let you know about, uh, based on the security information that you're not going to share any credentials with us because SBI will never ask anything from you. They will be speaking to you like this in a proper sense. I'm not talking about the amateur ones. I'm talking about the um, professional ones. They will be talking to you like this and they will be giving you the last digits and they will say that, as per we can see in our system, your uh, card is expiring on suppose 0327, right? Means third uh, March 2027. Team, you're with me? Listen to this very carefully. So you might tell the person that no, it is not. I can see it. You will again say that does your card end with this number? This, 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 suppose one, two, three, four. Is it the ending number of your card? You'll say, yes, it's fine. You will get confused that this person has my information. This person can also give me the first five digits of my card. This person can also give me the first uh, maybe seven digits of the card by missing those four. They will tell that I, be, I cannot give you that four as well because due to some security precautions. Then in the heat of the argument, they will say, no, it is expiring, sir. That, that, that might be a mistake. So in the heat, you might say that, no, my expiry date is something around maybe 2731, for example, sorry, maybe 1112. So you gave away your expiry talking like that, right? Am I making sense again? Means the person is quarreling with you. Yes, and in the heat, you say that no, it is 121212. You're telling the wrong date. It's written here. I can see it in my front. You given away another piece of information, correct? Now, by the time, if the person have already taken over your system via any uh, screen sharing application they can automatically send they, they know your uh, upi they know your phone number right now see things are not that difficult nowadays you try to and cbb number sir uh, pardon cbb number cbb yeah uh, we will be bypassing that we won't use your cbb but we'll take away your money let us see how so the person got your um four digit monthly pin uh, i mean four digit expiry now what happens if the person have already you know told to do you something told you to do something and you you couldn't and they finally anyhow by fooling you make you share your screen then what happens if if you are a google if you are an android user or an iphone user you might know whenever you set um 
UPI address, let it be a Google Pay, let it be a phone pay. Do you remember that your Google Pay and phone pay sends a message from your phone to authenticate your mobile number with the bank? Do, do you know this? Yes, sir. Yes. Now think, uh, let me show you something. Uh, Android users will not get a notification that we are sending a message from your phone. You will see that your phone number is getting verified connecting, your, connecting to your bank. But in iPhone, what happens? You get to see the code. I mean, if you go back in your messages, you see a code, right? Maybe SBI and some digits, your IMEI and all, which has been sent to the number, this, that. You remember this, right? Yes, sir. So what happens there? is now if i am telling you to share your screen and if i tell you to search by that number so those messages will open right am i right suppose for yes example, sir for example if this is the message you cannot see my phone screen intentionally purposely so suppose if this is the message and if i tell you to share your screen and search by that name right so what will happen i am on a screen recording i am i am viewing your screen for that time so i will be taking a screenshot i will be sending that same message remotely so what will happen from the remote server it will be or it can uh, i mean it can access your upi even as well right so you're sending the message from your phone but it is access accessible to a different place right again are you getting my point it's a little on cloud computing for the moment but yes then just left over is the pin which we will be gaining by talking to you most of us we keep a password we, we the passwords which we keep are like date of births family name no we do not give that much respect to the family we keep girlfriends we keep boyfriends password we keep um we keep our school names we keep our password best password uh -huh. password password uh one day i went to a person's house i asked the password he said bolbona so that is the password so we keep passwords which are you know easily figurable so from sir there, i won't question sir sorry for interrupting sir no problem go ahead uh, sir uh if you if you are to send a pdf file Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, can I see this? What uh, what is the inside in this file? The file. Can I see what you. what the code? The file is with you. You can do all types of experiment you want. You do not need any permission for that. <laughs> Safely. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Try it on a sandbox. Better, no problem. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> Password. 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 Yeah. So. Anyone, do, do you know about, you, you all know about Armstrong library, right? Or a password library? A password library and Armstrong library, they are both different terms. So what happens here is, we can, uh, these libraries do run simultaneously and try to get your password. So it will not be a tough one to gain a six digit number. And that too, you will give it out if you're properly social engineered. Generally, we often do a mistake. We share our passwords over Gchat, we share our passwords over WhatsApp, messages, Facebook, any unsafe links, right? We do this. We do this all the time. We say, "Keep hi." I opened your account. I'm sending you the password via WhatsApp. You can use it right now. Also, what happens is in a very strong mode of social engineering, people get into relations. They know each other, and then they take away the password from you. This is also a type of social engineering. You do not know when the person might turn against you and use your password against you, right? No account. Trust me. No Google account. No PUBG account. No Facebook account. No Instagram account. They get hacked no accounts i mean if there is a hacker who can hack the accounts uh, no accounts are safe right so again i mean bang your brains and listen to me no account can be hacked it is simply that you gave away the password of your account and somebody did what girls often do i'm not blaming anyone girls here but what girls often do girls often give a status i lost my whatsapp i lost my facebook not whatsapp i lost my facebook i lost my um, insta why because to gain followers, they give their Insta IDs and password to some professionals, which they use a trick to gain, uh, to, to increase the number of followers. You're getting my point. So that way, once you give away the password, the account is yours. Account to the idea, na? We do not have anything in hand. And they end up complaining that the account is hacked. No, no accounts are hacked. You give away your passwords. You give away your, give away your OTPs. And that is why it happens. Similarly for Facebook. Similarly, for the PUBG players, we com everyone complains, right? Our PUBG account is hacked, our COD account is hacked. No, you give them some small amount so that they can give you a, a bundle on the Google Play so that you can buy it, right? Am I wrong? It's for, it, the question is for both boys and girls. Am I right or wrong here? Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. No, sir. Right, sir. 
so since you give away the passwords for getting the fake fame or for getting the fake uh, guns or anything depending on the medium which you're doing if you do not give it away your accounts can never be hacked the person who is strong enough to hack google is working in google the person is strong enough to uh, hack i mean code code for microsoft or google they will be working for them by now until date did you get any mass you know uh, other than the third parties uh, did you get any mass news of accounts being hacked or data being transferred i believe no because cyberspace is safe else these companies will not be having those license correct so try to keep your things with you your password is yours your bank account details are yours you're not going to share your password pin or anything with your family friends anyone no one so that is how we keep ourselves safe think uh, think about the thing um i can tell you about uh, the last cyber security lab which i used uh, the people who used to use the uh, laptop before the computer before me they kept a password the password was welcome 1 2 3 so is this a password which can easily be guessable i was trying to open the system i typed two three passwords which came in my mind and welcome 1 2 3 was one of them and it opened so is this a password we need to keep no definitely not why do we say that our password needs to be a uh, capital a small a uh, special character why because when someone runs an armstrong library or someone runs a code i mean sorry uh, a dictionary of words on that so that it's not easily traceable the more you know you add different strings to it the more strong and complex it becomes making sense so cyber security, again it's a very simple network cyber security i mean it's nothing hectic nothing very high fi or big thing if you are you know what you are doing if you are cautious right a right use of everything will be you know making you an ethical hacker as well now yeah coding is necessary i'll not say that you do not need coding obviously you need coding because if suppose what happens if you're using someone else code uh, you will be like uh, you will be like a script kiddie like for example if uh, most of you i believe most of us i believe what we do in our college lab examination uh, back in the past what we do we <laughs> take programs even I, i i i remember doing it in even in my class 12 grade what what i used to do i used to uh, the computers are connected over the uh, network uh, at the schools and colleges so i used to push a pen drive somewhere nobody can notice and then i used to make a deep folder uh, in the back by hiding it so only my friends will be having the location in the, they will be mugging up the entire you know what we say entire path of the files c users this 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 and finally they will be getting the file so that file is having all the programs they slowly copy it when somebody is not around in front of the system and then they paste it so it's nothing it's simple but how you're using it that matters moving on so this is social engineering social engineering can be done to in many ways they can be you know people can stalk you people can know what you like they can start typing to you hi how are you doing they can be try to close to you they can send you a qr code for a payment oh one more thing which i remember just now talking about the payment if you're going to a shop try to think it very wisely if you're going to a shop never try to make a payment from your phone's qr code i repeat if you want to make a payment open an app open google pay open phone pay do not try to use any third party pay like for example i'm not talking about iphones but i am very much fascinated by its security however so see we have an application here if you can see my screen now so this application is a qr code scanner which is inbuilt in all the phones maybe your phone has one so do not avoid scanning a code a qr code from an inbuilt scanner ask me why see what happens most of the time is if i'm going to a shop and i am giving a fake qr code i mean not the code which is linked to the actual bank account but it's it's different it's a fake qr code it can take you to a different place as you scan and then it can perform certain activities getting my point again so by a qr code you can also be fooled anyone can go to the street uh, there can be a uh, printed generally the shops have printed qr code so i can also go there and i can print a qr code beside that so a person will be confused which one to scan at least there will be one person who will be scanning my one right and the shop owner might miss it because it's outside the shop so always use a application through which you're going to trigger that else you will be the sufferer again if you run an application which rishab have done you are gone if you are if you're sharing your passwords again even for let it be for uh, increasing your own um, what you call increasing your own followers uh, getting a getting a payoff in the game or having a skin doesn't matter you are doing it it means it's gone so nothing is directly hacked 
it's just a mind game it's it's just your mistakes that we our mistakes that we uh, that we do and for that we are blamed making sense team yes or no yes yes sir yes sir yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. sir if i sir if i will uh, saving a password in google is it safe or not sir very good question uh, this question is asked by pin to right yes sir okay this is one of my favorite topics i talked uh, someone asked me a question about incognito browsers right what happens the cache and cookie is cleared so have any one of you heard about cross site scripting anyone stored reflected you know this please repeat sir what term you are using uh, cross site scripting css no sir no sir do we have any hands or oh, what did i see just now Oh, I miss maybe. Okay, so what is cross site skip? I mean, what happens in there? People sometimes what happens, I'm telling you in short, not going into the detail. We write a piece of code which will be executed by your browser and it will give permission to access the cache and cookies. Getting my point, Pintu? You asked the question, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if your account is not live, I mean, for example, most of us we have the habit of using offline accounts. I mean, we do not sign in, but we use the browser, right? Without signing in. Yes, sir. So our our details are not encrypted in the cloud, but however, our details, our stored passwords, can be in the caches or can be accessed by the caches. It is possible sometimes that's how our passwords are stolen by them, right? Via yes, cross site scripting. So this way, if you are storing our passwords in the browser, it is not safe for you. At least if you are working in, uh, at least if you are an, uh, working in an engineering space where everything is online. So right now, I'll never prefer storing passwords online. It's better to write in a book. Getting my point? Yes, sir. The best thing is to memorize it. Keep logical passwords. However, again, it's better to write in a book than storing password. And it's best to not store passwords, neither in book nor anywhere. So avoid that. All because, sir, if if I, if I was sir uh, saved a password in Google, then uh, I was going to go go to in history, sir. History is history then i will click on this this was you open it in the same uh in the same of a browser like when i will open it after four to five days back then it will open it at the same date yeah obviously no not in the same date it will be having a different date as it will not open uh so but so same same uh i think uh same sir that means uh, Mm, let me give you an example that why we should not store our passwords. Suppose right now you are sitting in front of my laptop. I am clicking on Control T. Uh, suggest me a website. Suggest me a website. Uh, okay, let it be this website. This is one of my clients' website. So I am just going in WP dash admin just for opening the. Yeah. So you can see it here, right? Username and email address. So I'm using a third-party browser. I'm using a MacBook, a MacBook, uh, and I'm using Google Chrome on it. So if I'm clicking here, so it automatically came in, right? So if the password is also saved, it will automatically refill. Let me give you a better example. Hold on, just a moment, so that I can show you that. Sir, a screen share, sir. My sc uh, screen is being shared, right? You can see it. Yes, yes sir. sir. I see. It's it's easier. Oh, no problem. You can. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. You never type or share your passwords when you, you when your screen is being shared. That's a very important thing. But anyways, thanks. And the most important thing you should know what you're doing. Let me find the link first for you. Okay, so I'm just showing you an example of the link from here. Uh, suppose if you're writing something here, okay? Automatically, my password is filled. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, since this is a third party browser, it is automatically filling my password. Now, if I'm using Safari, which is a default browser here, if I try to sign in from here, here what will happen? Here it will either ask for my fingerprint. See, can you see the fingerprint sign? I click, if I click here, can you see this? That I need to either give my fingerprint or I need to enter my password to give another password? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, is your password encrypted behind a keychain in Chrome for the moment? I believe no, right? Yes, sir. So, anyone who sits in your system will be having the entire access of everything which you have? Yes or no? A person came to your house, let it be your brother or sister or anyone, 
wants to play games on your system, you give away your system. It means you give away your passwords. If you're not on a MacBook again, if you're on Apple devices, every every thing, every small thing you do needs a uh, authentication. Like without my permission or without my watch turn. Suppose if I'm not wearing my watch, my laptop cannot be turned on because my laptop only will be turning on when my watch is in my hand. You wear my watch in your hand, it will not open because of its settings, because of its environment. So that's the level of security which they are trying to cope up with. Making sense? Yes, sir. You never, yes, never, sir. Never, never share your password. Never save your passwords even in, on any browser. Yeah, for okay, the, sir. Thank you, sir. For the moment, I trust a lot uh, to the Apple Cloud or the keychain which they're using because of its encrypted security. But however, I believe that privacy is a myth and everyone's watching. So do not even go closer to saving your passwords. And one more thing I will be highlighting on uh, where it comes. We have done with social engineering. Uh, let us go on. We have a lot of topics to discuss on the same topic. I won't forget. Sir. How to set, uh, sir? How to decrypt uh, any viruses? I have some virus sir, in my sir uh, system. I have, <laughs> I have sir save it in my file. Then how to sir encrypt in this file? How was in code? Bad question. Like this type? Bad question. Bad question. You're you're riding at hundred kilometer per hour. You you <laughs> had an accident. You broke your leg. We need to amputate your leg. And now you cannot ask me that how can I get back my leg? It's already amputated, right? So this yes, is a very bad nice question. If you ask, how can I remove them? Remove them. Try to prevent. No, no, sir. I, I not uh, remove them, sir. I have a uh, some virus in my folder. I have already saved it in virus. Uh -huh. Sir, how to sir find in this virus file in what inside? No, you can never do that because you do not know the encryption type of that virus. You do not know what it is exactly doing, and you do not know what it has already affected once it is inside your system. So once it is inside your system, you can do nothing with that. It will automatically change. I mean. The people will not give you an easy thing. I mean, simple things to install in your system. Like I install this in your system and it's done. And you can just act with my file and get my code and everything. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Are you getting my point again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm writing a piece of code and also I'm writing the code will be erased once I double click on that after one execution. What will you do with the file? You can do nothing. But what the effects of that is already done into your system. So do not even think of what to do when a virus is in. Try to prevent it from coming in. That's the best, uh, I mean, approach from this end. Sir, okay. each antivirus so what, uh, what saves our from virus, sir. Uh, again, please come again. Antivirus sir, saves our computer from virus, sir, fully. Definitely, yes. Sir, uh, sir the, if I you have, uh, sir, antivirus, then, uh, sir, you have sent a PDF that, then uh, that will not happen, sir. No, I don't know that it will happen. See, again, again, let me come over. I do not say that it will not happen. Antivirus, what they do, you'll, you might have noticed if you're using an antivirus that if they find a suspicious file, they send it to their labs, isn't it? They ask your permission. This file is found, send it to the lab, okay or not. The text varies from message to uh, company to company, correct? We get to see it, right? They want to send the sample of the virus to the lab especially for Quicken and Kaspersky. So what happens once a virus is found or a malware is found or prone to be detected as a malware, it sends the file. Once the file is sent, they diagnose and then they give a patch for that. So if it's a new virus in the market, no antivirus can touch it off. I mean, or deal with it. Making sense? Antivirus is a program. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's a program library. So if it's having something about that virus information, then it will definitely quarantine. It might repair. So I I I also do not you know likely to repair things, but it's it's always better to quarantine. Hello, sir. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. My my name is Chandan Kumar. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm you. Uh, when I will whenever I am just code, there's mm -hmm. a notification from Mac Cafe that uh, there's a mal antivirus running and uh, uh, I have to uh, stop the real time run option that is op uh, available in Mac Cafe antivirus. Okay, can you come again once more? I'm sorry. Sir, whenever, when, uh, whenever I code in the VS code, there's a, a notification from uh, Mac, Af Mac Cafe antivirus that uh, a virus uh, try to uh, enter your computer. So how to stop that, sir? Uh, may I know if your McAfee is um, 
activated? I mean, is it a just a standalone trial version or the one which you have bought? Yes, no, so I, I buy it uh, for one year. You have purchased a subscription. That. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. subscription, right? Yes, sir. So it, it can be an outcome of an activity which you have already installed. Uh, have you ever faced this situation? You're turning on your computer and automatically sometimes files starts opening in your, uh, I mean, website starts opening in your Chrome or any of the default browser which is installed in your system? Like you're opening Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So what is MacF actually doing is it is detecting some suspicious background activity and that's stopping it and blocking it because it cannot, it's, it might not be powerful enough to stop that virus, but it is giving you an information about that. That is why I told in the beginning, I always prefer Kaspersky or Quick Hill. Okay, so but it stops my code. It did not allow my VS code to run the program. It stops your code. Then it can be possible that your uh, memory integrity I means core uh, core isolation technology has been already violated. Uh, is your core isolation technology turned on or is your Windows uh, pirated? No, sir. Your Windows is not pirated. Perform a clean installation and it will be all fine. Or run a okay, full system sir. scan by the defender after completely updating your system to the date to one H2 for version Windows. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Cool. Let us go forward with malvertising. Sir. Yep. Sir, uh, if I have uh, saved some virus in sir zip file, then mm -hmm. sir, will Windows Defender is not so. If uh, if uh, if I will unzip this file, then Windows Defender is so. How it will, sir? Okay, this is a good question. So, what happens when we zip a file? Zipping, see, it's not like that. Windows Defender will always show the ones. Because sir, I have saved, I have saved in my laptop, sir, approx hundred plus if viruses. Zipped, sir. If a file is zipped. Do you remember when yes, I sent you a file in PDF form? I, I sent no, you a not, not a PDF file, sir. Uh, no, no, no. I, I just gave you of the file in PDF, but I sent you a file which was zipped, right? It was yes, a sir, yes, sir. zip file. What happens exactly there? When you try to run that file, I mean, any file which is not an executive file or not an executive selection based on the, I forgot, based on <laughs> your operating <laughs> system which you're using. So mm -hmm. that time you will be needing a USC uh, smart screen option that this file might cause harm to your system. Do you want to run it or do you want, do not want to? Getting my point? So that's yes, smart sir. screen. So unless it is having a smart screen access, Windows Defender will not take down your system and slow down by scanning that. All systems are not fast, super fast. There may be old processes, so that will skip it automatically. Getting my point? That's not harmful unless you are giving the permission. You do not give permission for them to run, they do not run from the zip file. So anything which cannot be executed and it's in a sand zip file, it's safe for you. So Sir, window will be skipping it. If I will uh, give a uh, permission in zip file, not a uh, administrator, only you for user, then it, you, yes, you extract it, it will stop immediately, it will quarantine. It will stop, sir. Definitely. You extract and keep the file, it will be quarantined. Can you install a crack in your system uh, from a zip uh, if your antivirus is on? I believe not. It blocks sooner you click double click and uh, try to install it, right? Sir, I will every time try it, sir, because I have 100 plus viruses in my same, uh, in, in, I will save in my computer, sir, uh, in zip file. Mm -hmm. Then I will, sir, one by one file, it will uh, unzip, then it will every time, sir, remove, remove it. Remove it. Zip. Yes, sir. How do you know it's a virus inside the zip? Uh, sir, uh, uh, I found in the net. In this virus, I found in net, sir. I couldn't get you. Can you come again? Get into, get into PC, sir. Get into PC. It will. Okay, no, no. I, I, the question is, how do you, I mean, how do you verify that those are viruses? Uh, sir, a Windows Defender is a, found a, it is a spam, it is a virus. Okay, when you defend the shows it, okay. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that is how you uh, know it is a virus. So you do not have anything else, right? Yeah, yeah, sir. Right. Remember, do not execute any files which is not of your work. Like whenever you will be, after some days you will be in uh, corporate. So in corporate, just do not look at the things you do not have time for or you do not need. So remember that for each and every companies, for each and every college websites, uh, I, I, I handle two, three college websites by my own with my team. So we know that what people does in the websites or how they try to toss it or do anything on that. So do not do anything which is not needed. Do not install anything which is not needed. Do not look into things which is not needed. 
that way you can keep yourself safe and that is why the that is the main motive of today's workshop it's based on basic awareness so this basic has a lot of thing inside that you need to keep in your mind okay moving back to the PC. yes sir mm -hmm. so malvertising Shreshi, you want to take this? Uh, sure. Well, malvertising, what is a, it's, it simply means advertising malware. Like, and what is a malware? Something which is malicious, uh, malicious software is a malware. So like he has mentioned already many examples like when you are trying to download something from UC Mini or Opera, few things automatically get downloaded. So you never know that whether you are downloading or whether the thing is which is automatically getting download is a malware or it's actually a normal software. So like sometimes they often scare you by saying that your PC is having and viruses click here to clear them and you just click the if someone by mistake clicks it and then you're gone game is over so that is what a malware does it is not of us of ours use it is completely malicious it is can be used for gaining information or intruding viruses trojans and so on now let us put some controversies over the topic uh, malware and software so you can see me right here now think for a moment, what is uh, what is a malware? It means a software which is malicious is called a malware. Now what is malicious for me might not be malicious for you. What is useful for me might not be useful for you. So if you, uh, if you are, uh, if you want to download and see movies from the torrent, so torrent is, is not malicious for you. It's a good software for you because you use it and you're benefited. However, it can be a malware for me because I see virus in it because it's a it, it is just an actual replica of Trojan. Making sense, team. So we do not call anything as a malware directly. We do not call anything as a software directly. It changes from person to person mindsets. If uh, I have faced people like um, they they're complaining about Microsoft Office, telling that it's a malware. Why? Because updates is making it bulkier and th that bulkiness is slowing down the system. So it depends on what's a malware and what's not a malware for you. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, why are you so down? <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know you're all hungry. Uh, so am I. <laughs> Won't take much of your time. OK. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the next comes in the PPT, I guess, cyber stalking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So stalking, what is physical stalking? Like someone is running, is simply walking behind you, watching you or your behaviors, keeping a track of what you are doing. It is stalking. And if it is happening in the cyberspace, then it is cyber stalking. Like cyber stalking means watching and analyzing your virtual behavior. It can be like anything, like which time of the day you come online or which come of the day you are not sitting in the PC, but your PC is on or so that the intruder can just enter and do whatever he wants. Especially this cyber stalking there, it, any, anyone can get affected by the cyber stalking, but especially the victims are women and children. Now, Jomo, you have some uh, examples so you can better explain it, I guess. See. Uh, what do generally I'm talking about the boys? What do we do? We open Instagram and we go to some profiles and we like some of the pictures of a particular uh, applicant which you're seeing, right? So let me turn off the screen sharing. I cannot talk without I see people. Okay, so see what happens. We go, we like some people, we like some photographs, we like some things, but not all together. We are we are developing tr trying to develop something mentally. We're trying to, uh, you know, either impersonate or do something which will be drawing the attention of the participant. For example, we have Chandan. Now, if I'm going to his account, trying to uh, like his photographs, 
making some absurd comments so that will exactly draw his attention that will you know give him a sense of irritation that somebody is following me somebody is up to me or doing something or trying to do something on me so that is exactly cyber stalking so team in today's world cyber stalking is you know is very much punishable and you know very much taken care of because whatever we do in social media everything gets stored now if you're bullying or spamming someone in your messages it can automatically be reported with your actual messages so this talking i believe i i should i i cannot explain it a little more on the call but i guess you can understand that what other things can be done through this i mean through this source of cyber stalking so try to avoid even talking to the person do not bother people online and do not be bothered directly block the person do not enter into controversies do not talk much so remember the more we talk the more we get into trouble either on the phone by some uh, people so bank do not give a call so if you're trying that we are fooling them we are wasting their time do not do it you get a call from an unknown number i do not pick unknown numbers by the way most of the time and i do not use true caller to reveal the identity when i am on a call when i am where so it gives time it saves time and it 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 helps it does not help the people to know that what i am doing or to mark you, you need to be not predictable to be safe if you are predictable you are not safe right so people cannot know that what you do what means everything that come out of you should be unpredictable now it that doesn't mean that tomorrow if our it's our exam now teachers now you you got few unpredictable ways to write it somewhere and do it in certain ways okay so the next word uh, next one is the software piracy let me again share my screen so what software piracy um we all love to use the softwares right so we use different softwares we download it from the torrent we try to run it and alas we are we are the ones to suffer nothing properly why did i ask someone just before some time that is your windows uh, genuine or not team uh, let us talk a uh, few of you who are interested about operating system windows software who use it please come on the mic let us talk i will be asking you something you will be telling me and you'll get the answer that uh, uh, the, uh, just discussing the pros and cons hello yeah. now tell me team um, we we use this type of uh, softwares often right we we need a windows 10 pro and we get a windows 10 home we download it from the torrent and we install it and we think that yeah we are a hero we got we cheated windows right yes or no yes sir we use a kms pico we use a dz for installing it uh, install the crack inside right yes sir so remember one thing whenever we are doing it we are just we are not helping microsoft neither we are cheating them we are cheating our own selves think um we are not giving the product key the system is not activated actually but few uh, things are replaced from one place to the other showing your system being activated now you think that if that patch which you are using is directly connected to the hacker server or the core server what will happen we will be receiving updates in our windows directly from their server and windows will be automatically installing updates based on its own um, convention right so we do not know what's coming in background and getting installed in our system automatically unless we are having a valid windows and a valid to check up that uh, what of comes from the windows update is valid right yes so if you are using any other applications let it be an error let it be any application which is pirated there there are vulnerabilities we can get anything through the software update bypassing our user account control because it user access control because it has the access to install it and then finally again we are dead right dead in the yes. sense of computers they are into the attacker's hand so if you are using any pirated software um we are again done cool so try not to use any softwares which are pirated and always try to make sure that uh, you know not to use even torrent because anything can happen any time torrent do you know how the server of torrent one uh, works suppose i have a file downloaded in my system and you all have a file downloaded in that same, same system you often have noticed that the speed of the file increases if the number of pages is more am i making sense yes now think that what happens in this case it comes from their devices to our device right it sits from their device and enters our device that is why that is how they accelerate the speeding so from my system you are receiving the file so what if i'm changing breaking the encryption and changing the file and i am injecting a virus into your system make sense again so it can be a movie only you're trying to turn on the transcript to 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 just see the, the subtitles to see in the movie what they speak and my file got executed so again avoid uh, using um pirated files or pirated softwares so hello mm -hmm. 
Sir, I want to ask a question. Hmm? Sir, which operating system is most secure? The Mac or the Unix or Depends Windows? on the user completely. Depends completely on the user. So no, I want to give you an example. Hello. Mm -hmm. Suppose I'm riding a bike at 120 km per hour, mm -hmm. per hour mm -hmm. an accident happens. Mm -hmm. And so which helmet will protect me much better? It will be a local or a, a Vega or the SMK? Macintosh. Suppose. If it's in that way, then Macintosh. Yeah. OK, sir. Thank you. Sir, I have something to ask. Actually, yeah. when do we, we always do the program, uh, we are trying to install some software that is Python and MATLAB in our computer. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it happens that it is uh, clashing with our uh, antivirus. Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, which antivirus will be better? Uh, that In that time, we uh, need to stop the antivirus or we have to just pause the antivirus for some times. Okay, is it about the personal desktop or is it about uh, desktop? For my, I'm saying about my laptop. Okay, so antivirus, uh, and is it, a, is it a program which you're trying to install which needs a product key or is it a genuine open program? I mean, uh, it needs, uh, in some cases it needs some product key, but in case, whenever I am talking about the Python, uh, mm -hmm. I, when I was uh, only installing the Anaconda or only some the some of the threads I was installing, it does not matter. It was then going on, but in some cases, better to say about the MATLAB, it is just uh, clashing with the uh, opera, with the antivirus that is already installed there. If in case of MATLAB, we used to, uh, we need some cracks because we never use the official software of MATLAB because it's yes, too costly. Yes. So that is the time no antivirus will be behaving in a different way, already mm -hmm. stopping it. Let it be quick or Casper Sky, my two favorites. However, uh, in case of uh, in case of Anaconda, if you're talking uh, or the Jupyter Notebook or anything, this should be fine with Quickle and uh, Kaspersky. This, this so in that time, uh, if my computer uh, computer is not under any security, is there any or any any uh, in some cases of the Android system is it is not under any security? Uh, is there be any problem to that is showing because there is already a problem inside your PC. I mean, there is something already inside trying to execute execute uh, that with the software, and that is the reason why we are getting it. Okay, okay. So if you're turning off and installing, it means something else is definitely getting triggered with that, or it is not the genuine thing to install directly. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Sir, one yes. more question, yes. sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, what is the death of blue screen, sir? What is the death of blue blue screen? I mean, why do we get blue screens in our system? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get the blue screen. Several thousand reasons to get a blue screen. You have an issue in your RAM, we get a blue screen. You have an issue in your uh, uh, core files, we get a blue screen. You have an issue run. Uh, you have your RAM memory full, we get a blue screen. You, you, your disks go up to 100% unstuck, we get a blue screen. We have fragmented files in our computer, we get a blue screen. We in have network error, sir. Network error, sir. For network error, we get a blue screen. For a camera error, we get a blue screen. For a micro hard microphone glitch, we get a blue screen. But uh, sir, yeah. he will every time demand sir a uh, SRC scan, SRC scan. That then sir, what is sir SRC scan, sir? How it will work? What SRC? It's SFC. It's for system file checker. Oh, sorry, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, SFC we scan. Use yes. types of scan that is SFC and DISM, right? SFC scan. What happens? It tries to check the system file, which is a backup of your file and the one which is installed in your system. They match the files simultaneously and try to figure out that if any files are corrupted or not. In case the corruption is found, it will display corrupted and repair. Or if the uh, corruption, I mean, it's not detected, it will show you uh, that uh, the corrupted files are found and not repaired and the file is saved in the log. So you open the log, you check where it is wrong, you go, do, go for it manually. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, one more, one more question, sir. If I will uh, save any, uh, if I will create a drive in our uh, our PC then sir, uh, bit locker is on. Sir, uh, is this bit locker is decrypt or oh, sorry, bit locker is corrupted or not? If I will not use in after one to two year, three year. Means uh, if we are installing bit locker, are you asking me that? Uh, is it safe for using in two three years? Is it the question? Sir, uh, if I will use a bit locker, sir, then sir, this in this file sir, corrupted uh, or not, sir? 
no no inside bit locker nobody can touch it's one of the most world's powerful uh, encryption system technology which nobody can till date i guess nobody have decrypted it so it's safe completely inside because sir uh, i will face uh, in after 4 to 5 days some error in bit locker sir uh, how And, are sir, you bit locker you cannot use yes, bit locker how are you using bit locker sir in in sir <laughs> file system sir no, save or some drive is pirated because by default you will be getting a uh, windows 10 home in your system and i believe nobody yes, sir, yes, sir. default at uh, default not uh, any install any pirated sir in no, default then i am afraid bit locker should not be there in your system because windows 10 pro i believe you are going to buy it with 6000 rupees right yes sir yes sir so it's a pirated operating system again tomorrow i will be going a bit more into to check how how to show it since we are running out of time today So yes, tomorrow I will be letting you. I will be helping you check how can we uh, check your bit locker. How can we check if a system is pirated or not? If the Windows is active or not? A piece of code, and we will be showing you how double clicking a file can give you all my system information from one PC to the other just by a. You know, I can send you an assignment link, and you click on the link, and I'll have everything through your Outlook. Okay. Okay, sure. Actually, actually, I can't do two days only, but since it's already eleven, I need to rush to a different meeting. So we are uh, closing up for the moment with the last with a few slides which we have at the end. Okay. Um, is anyone from the faculty uh, present right now? Yes, sir. Uh, so, shall we close for the moment and continue uh, from here tomorrow? And, and uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for enlightening us by your so much val valuable lectures. And can I ask to share, share, she, ma'am, share, she, ma'am, ma'am, will you continue uh, later on or from tomorrow mm -hmm. or anything else? Yeah, yeah, sure. We can continue from tomorrow. Oh, if if you wish, you can continue from now because due to our late, your session has been interrupted. No, no. Uh, it was no, like we, we both have a schedule yeah. uh, from eleven well, already. Well, I I understood. I understood. So no so, problem. We will be uh, starting early then uh, the last day, uh, and then tomorrow we will be starting early and we will be covering this topic and moving on to the next. Well, uh, thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, ma'am, for enlightening us by your so much valuable, uh, so much valuable knowledge about this type of uh, cyber security. What we must know uh, better in this era, and we'll meet in the next session that is going to be held from tomorrow. We'll meet in the next session, and can I uh, hand this over to my Head of the department, Aparthi Mitra, sir, to talk with us regarding some of the departmental topics and some of the more uh, information that he wants to share share with us. Sure, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma first, first, ma very thanks to Shomudito and Sheshi. Very good session you have done. I'm the head of the department of the uh, NC department, and we are very much beneficial. Uh, about your topic and next session also you are supposed to do some kind of hands on training so that the students also will be much more benefited i am not um, taking so much time and very best of luck all of you and all the students who are over here okay so so let's let's move, move on for the next session okay. thank, thank you sir, sir. To thank you that, to say that i am just thank thinking, you uh, anything this Ending this uh, session, and tomorrow we'll join. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. So, so we are concluding this meeting for today. We are going to meet in the next day in the next session in a new way. Uh, goodbye for today, sir, ma'am, and to all of the participants. Goodbye for today. Okay. Thank so you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, goodbye for today, students, and goodbye for today, today to all of the participants. You please join from the next day. In the next session, I will uh, be very happy uh, if, when I will meet with you in the next day. Goodbye. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Good yeah, just, to, just to, just to mention that tomorrow again we'll have a session from 9 a.m. If you can refer to your mails, your mails have been sent to you. If you can refer to your mail. uh the session is again going to be held from 9 am tomorrow so if you can yes. please join in by 8:58 to 5 that will be good yes sir okay sir
If no, anything sir. will be changed, if anything will be changed, you will be contacted by mail. Okay. Yes. I uh, will be contact mail and please uh, keep checking your mails because your mail addresses are with us. So if there is anything that is uh, that is shifted or anything that is um, that we need to tell you about this webinar, we'll be contacting you over email. So uh, uh, please check on that from time to time. Okay, goodbye for today. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sir. Goodbye, everybody.